What's happening, HC Nation? Today I want to give a shout out uh, on this Minnesota Monday. I want to give a shout out to Pamela, who does this great blog that everyone you should uh, go look at if you like history. If you want the historical part of the game, this is where to go. It's called Liberating Letters, and it's actually letters to her daughter, who is a child, very, very young right now, but she's putting together these letters of all these different historical figures. And she doesn't just write them out as regular history. She writes them in a very intensely, uh, um, uh, <laughs> intense way of, of writing. I don't know really how to put that, but she writes it, ve she's very well written in her blog and tells the story of different people from history that she wants her child to be able to model her life after. The person today is someone that I've admired um, the last few months, and actually probably the last year, ever since I learned about him. Um, he's actually a slave, or was a slave. And uh, this is back during the Civil War. And he was actually one of the slaves, and there's actually a few of them, that changed the whole Civil War. I mean, literally, their one or two acts changed the whole Civil War. It would not have had, uh, turned out how it did if it wasn't for these people. One of them is a man by the name of Robert Smalls. Robert Smalls was a slave. He was actually brought up on a ship, taught how to sail it, and uh, his master basically taught him everything. But one night he decided, you know what, I'm done. I need to get away, and I'm gonna save these other slaves that are on the ship. So when the three white guards had left the ship, it was called the uh, USS Planter, when they left the ship to go out and stay the night on land, Robert Smalls acted. And what he did was he put on the uniform of uh, the captain and his straw hat was specific to just captains. And he took off of the ship. And he didn't just take off of the ship. Every person who was Confederate, he had to pass by because it was a Confederate ship. He had to pass by and he had to pass off as if he was the captain of the ship. And yeah, there was probably a lot of heads that turned every time he hit certain posts, but he was able to get past all of them, and then he turned the ship over to the Union Army. Yeah, that's right. This slave had changed the whole part of the Civil War because this ship was actually very important in the rest of the Civil War. And not just that, but Robert Smalls was also very important for the rest of the Civil War. And not just that. Now, right after the Civil War, something really big happened that nobody really talks about in history books, especially in the private, in the, the public schools. And I don't know why they don't teach this. It, it, some people would say it was political. I don't know. But the big thing that they don't teach is that right after the Civil War, we had the biggest influx of African American legislatures. Legislators. Uh, Hiram Rhodes Rebels was actually the first U.S. Senator right after, um, right after the Civil War. And guess where he was elected? Mississippi. Yeah, of course. That, the state that, I mean, right now it has the, uh, or at least back during segregation, it had the biggest uh, rep uh, rep um, uh, reputation, there you sorry, had the biggest reputation as being a, uh, a very racist state. Well, it was Mississippi was the first one to, to elect unanimously a black senator for the U.S. Senate. Yeah, not just for the state Senate, for the U.S. Senate. And he served there. Then there's Robert Smalls. He was actually part of the House of Representatives. And there's actually a few other ones that also joined on and were elected by a large majority to get them elected. Wow, you never really hear about this because all you hear about is segregation uh, made it so that uh, African Americans or blacks could not uh, interact with with whites at a regular basis. These guys were senators and House of Representative representatives. Holy cow! That is so much more than just a regular interaction on the street. These guys were in high power in the U.S. government. That's awesome. And the guy that we talked about last time, um, which was uh, Wentworth Cheswell, he was the first black um, legislature, legislator in all of U.S. history, and that was right after the Revolutionary War, not even the Civil War. There was still slavery. His family came from slavery. Boom! He was a legislator. Holy cow! Seriously, how does this not 
hit every single history book. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. And nothing is written about it. I mean, there's also another person that's really big in the game, Peter Salem. He's on the cover of one of our, uh, one of our decks. Peter Salem won uh, one of the battles at Bunker Hill by shooting uh, Major Pitcairn. Um, sorry, that was a huge thing. Major Pitcairn was actually a, a British major that was loved by both sides, the colonists and the British. So much that when he was shot, the whole, the whole battle ended. Yeah, that's right, completely ended because both sides loved him. And there was actually, from what they say, there was actually tears that were shed when they died and when he died. Loved so much. That happened because of Peter Salem uh, sending the fatal blow to him. And yet, at the same time, because he was a slave, he didn't get the credit. Why are these things actually told in history? Why aren't a lot of these stories that Historical Congress brings out, or um, these blogs that are, are great examples of U.S. history, why are these things shared in, in public schools? Anyways, not going into tangent anymore, um, but these are important people. And so, if you have time, look up Robert Small's history. Check it out on YouTube. There's a lot of great, uh, um, great YouTubes on it, videos on it. And there's one that I really like. They did it a great job. There was not one word spoken over it, but it had some swearing. And so automatically, I couldn't let it be part of this. But check it on YouTube. Get your parents' uh, permission, because there is a, a not so good one, but it's a great one to watch. Um, so if you have any questions, comments about African Americans before segregation and what uh, um, Woodrow Wilson had done to create segregation, please put those in the post below. People need to know what happened and why segregation was brought into to play and why they're not teaching these things in school. It's pathetic. Sorry. I, I love the education system, at least the teachers. I don't like the education system. It's really failed us. Historical Conquest is there to help recreate that. And so if you have any questions about that, please put them in the post below. Otherwise, we'll see you again. And uh, thanks for all the support. You guys are wonderful. Check this guy out. He's awesome. Thanks again. Bye-bye.